Alright, first Corinthians chapter eight. Let's pray with me, Father. Speak to us right now, Lord, and have come out what you once said. Quicken us, Lord. Uh, not just physically, Lord, but mentally. Give us, give us a, a zeal and an excitement today for the word. Uh, we want to cast off uh, not just cares and problems, but our tiredness, uh, fatigue, Lord, our complacency, our lukewarmness that we can all enter into. Lord, get us excited, uh, give us a hunger. We want to hear something that we don't hear in the world. We only hear it from you, Father. And so give us the uh, capacity to concentrate and uh, receive your word today, Lord. And we ask God in Christ's name, amen. Okay. Amen. Um, there, hey, Josh. <laughs> I'll start with that. I didn't think I was going to start this message with hey, Josh. Have you ever heard of the All-22? Yeah. Okay. So, I could tell you last Monday the Patriots lost 33 to 17, 14, right? They, they, okay, they stink. Uh, why do they stink? Because they lost, okay? Uh, whatever, if you like sports or the Red Sox, I can tell you the score of the game. The Bruins won the other night, four to nothing. Oh, they're good, because they won four to nothing. And that's what you know. Uh, what I told you. I can put on the, the, uh, the, the news in the morning and find out it's going to rain today or tomorrow. And then when it rains, I like I knew that. I heard it on the weather report. And so that's knowledge. It's knowledge based on a fact. Uh, but the, the fact is that it's only what I was told about the game. Did you see the game? No, I couldn't watch it. I was out. Well, what was the score? Oh, the score was this. They lost. They stink. That's my, my decision about it. You know? Okay, but then someone else says, well, I watched the game. Oh, so you have more knowledge about the loss of the game. You watched it. So tell me what happened. Oh, so-and-so to an interception, and then they fumbled, and then they couldn't run the ball, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so your knowledge is deeper uh, of the game. Okay, and then if you're a football fan, which only looks like a few are, but you have to work with me here. Then in football, they have this thing called the All-22. And it's a film of the game, of where every game, every, every team does this. They film the game and they, they have the ability to film every single position. So the coach can look at what everybody did on every single play to see who messed up. And that's the reason why they lost, <coughs> or won, in this case. And so, uh, reporters and journalists now have gotten hold of the All-22, and everybody thinks they're professional because they, they say, I've watched the All-22. I know why they lost. And it's true, they, they can tell you exactly who missed a block, who didn't do this, who did that. And, and they have even deeper information about why they lost. So one person just hears from the, the radio, they lost, they stink. Another person says, I watched it. And this is why they lost. A little bit more knowledge. And then someone else says, oh, I've watched the All-22. And this is really why they lost. And then there's the player. He's in the game. He knows everything. The players know more than anybody of what happened in the game. So you would say the players have the best knowledge of the game. But then now take that and apply that to things in your life. Knowledge, we're gonna talk a little bit about knowledge today um, and the lack of it. And the, and the, and the, the, the pretense that some people think they have it all. Have you ever met somebody who's a know-it-all? Or have you ever called somebody or talked to somebody and then you walk away and go, they think they're a know-it-all. You know, that person's a know-it-all. Or maybe you're the know-it-all. 
Maybe you have something to say about everything. Like somebody can tell you about their Aunt Jean who lives 5,000 miles away and say, I know that place. I know where they went. I know, I know that. And, and, and then you go and walk away you say, they're a know-it-all. But what do they know? They, don't, they know something based on their perspective of it, of what they heard or read in the book, but they don't know personally uh, your Aunt Jean. You do. But they take over the conversation by, say, talking about this place or what happened to them when the similar thing happened, blah, blah, blah. And, and it becomes all about them. They're know-it-alls. Um, look at this verse in 1 Corinthians 8. Uh, we'll start in verse 1. It now is touching things offered to idols, offered unto idols. Uh, this isn't about idols today, but as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Uh, Paul was talking about the teaching that the church at Corinth had about eating foods that were offered to idols. That was the issue he was talking about. We're not talking about that today. We're going to talk about other issues. But this was, they had knowledge about the church's stance and viewpoint on eating foods offered to idols. What was their knowledge? The church in Jerusalem said, you shall not eat food offered to idols. But they had a deeper knowledge of it. They knew why the church said that. Some people just knew that the church said that. Have you ever heard of a, a rule and you don't question why the rule is, you just go, oh, that's, that's the rule. So I got to do it. That's the rule. That's what they said. But why did they make the rule? And when you know why, then you have a deeper knowledge of it. The reason they made the rule is because, not because it was wrong to eat foods offered to idols. There was nothing in, in and of itself wrong. It was that it offended some other people. And they said, so to avoid offending other people, don't eat food offered to idols. Not that it was wrong or something wicked was in the food. It was actually allowed in Leviticus for the priests when they offered food to God to eat the food of, the, the leftover food of, the, uh, the sacrifice to, for, to provide for them. So, so he says, so we all have this knowledge. We all know that, that it's forbidden to eat food offered to idols. Knowledge puffeth up. I think I know it all. I'm a know-it-all about the law. I know that it says this. I know what it says. You don't have to tell us, Paul. But charity edifieth. Charity meaning love. Love edifieth. <clears throat> There's a connection between knowledge and love that there Paul is trying to make here uh, for the point of his discussion. But the verse 2 is what I wanted to focus on. And if any man think he knoweth anything, <clears throat> He knoweth nothing as he ought to know it. Go back to the football game. If I think that the team stinks because I heard the score on the radio, but I don't know anything else about the game, then I don't know anything as I ought to know it. If I watch the All-22, but I'm not the player, I still don't know everything as I ought to know it. I wasn't in the game. So my knowledge... And no matter what degree it is, your, our knowledge is limited uh, in perspective uh, in relationship to what? The next verse. I'll, uh, well, let's read it. If, but if any man love God, if any man love God, the same is known of him. But who's it known by if any man loves God? Uh, God. God. God knows if you love him or not. You can say with a thousand words, I love God, but God knows in your, if in your heart you really love him. And a person can say, I know this about God, and I know that about God, but God knows their heart. If a man says, I love God, in his heart, it is known of him by God. He knows, this. And for instance, in Isaiah, uh, when God said, this people honors me with their lips, 
the people had a great knowledge of God. I, we know God, we're God's people. We know what God's like. We know that God is righteous. We know that we are, we are God's children. We know that we have been set apart by God. We know that God delivered us from the Egyptians. We know all these things, God said, but your heart is far from me. And what was he saying? You don't know me at all. You say you know me, you heard the score, but you don't know what happened. You don't understand my heart. You don't understand the love behind the action. So you don't really know me. And this is what God is occupied with with us, is, is, is the love part of the knowledge of God towards us more than our knowledge of Him. Example, I, I met a guy yesterday on the street. Uh, we were soul women. And this guy... <coughs> I, you know, you don't judge people, but when you come staggering up and you smell and you've got a, bar, a bag with a bottle in it, you kind of know where they're coming from, you know what I mean? Not take a rocket science. Anyways, I stopped talking. How you doing? Say, oh, I'm good, you know, I'm like, give him a track. I said, have you ever heard uh, about the love of God and how that he loves you? He goes, yes, I have. I said, oh, good. I said, what have you heard? He goes, I have heard that you must be born again. I said, are you born again? He goes, I was. I got born again 20 years ago. I said, that's great. I said, do you know what John 3, and he started quoting the verse. And I said, if you stepped off this curb because you're staggering, <laughs> you know, and got hit by that car that's coming down the street, I said, where would you go? He goes, I don't know. I said, then how can you say you're born again? He goes, I don't know if I'm still born again. I said, I got saved 20 years ago, but I have done wrong. I don't know. I said, you've lost your assurance. Uh, you have a knowledge of God. Do you know that every scripture, I talked to this guy for 20 minutes, every scripture I said to him, he finished it. He knew every single scripture. I was kind of giving scriptures to show that he was still saved, that he couldn't lose it. What sort of a God doeth, I said, he goes, he doeth forever. I know that verse, right? I said, in Hebrews, God says, I will. He goes, never leave you or forsake you. I know that verse. I said, wow. I said, you know the word of God so well. I said, but you don't know God. You don't know his love, you know? And he goes, you're right. He goes, you're right. He goes, my wife is saved. He, and, and I, we're talking, he goes, my wife's been saved for 40 years. I says, and what does she say about you? He goes, she prays with me, you know? <clears throat> and, and then while we're talking, his wife called him. Wow. And she's talking, he goes, as he must have said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm right now, he goes, I'm talking to two pastors. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so then she said something to him and he gets on the phone and said, what did she say? She said, she told me to listen to you. Yeah. you know? So obviously the, the problem was known and he knew it. And I tried to say, listen, if you said that prayer and you really meant it, I said, you're saved forever. It doesn't matter you know, what you've fallen into. He goes, I know I'm backsliding. I know I'm in a backslidden state. I said, yeah, but you still should know that even in a backslidden state, if you make your bed in hell, God is there with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. You told me you know that verse, yes. I said, how is it that you don't know that God loves you like this, that he's not gonna do that? That you think you've lost your salvation, or that you don't even know if you're saved anymore? I said, that when you backslide, that's one of the results of backsliding, is losing your assurance of your salvation. Your knowledge is limited. Because it's not about what we know about God, it's about that we're known of God. And that God knows those who love Him. And at this one point, this guy, or maybe he still did, still loved God, but he couldn't find his way out of his, his, the, his sin that he was in. And he wouldn't pray with us. I said to him, I said, do you want to be sure? Do you want to pray? Do you want to recommit your life? No, I don't. Uh, have a good day. That's when we left it at that. But 
But the point is this, is that we can say we know, we know, we can be a know-it-all, and, and even in terms of God. I know that verse. I know that doctrine. I know what you're saying, Pastor. I've heard it before. But is it doing anything for you, or is it just the words? Is it just the score? And you hear a message uh, about this, and it just goes in one ear and out the other, and it doesn't have an effect on your life. If it's from the Spirit of God, why not? Why not? It's just you knowing the score. I know what that says. I've heard that before. It's not penetrating. It's not having an effect on me. It's knowledge. Do you know the Bible says in, in uh, 2 Timothy 3 that in the last days, and many of us think we're in the last days now, that um, people will have this mindset. They will, they will ever be learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And this is so true today. People are learning things at a rapid pace. In, the, in Isaiah it says that in the end times that knowledge shall increase. People will run to and fro seeking knowledge and knowledge will increase. And there is so much knowledge about things in this world. Don't we marvel at how much knowledge our children have? And our grandchildren, my grandkids can figure things out that I could never figure out. The video games, this is, oh, this is how you do it, Papa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't go, it would take me years to learn that. How do you know how to do that? Oh, I just want to know, you know? Knowledge increases. Uh, technology, the computers, people have knowledge about everything. We've, in, in a sense, everybody's becoming a know it all, they know about everything. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for them to know something if it, that knowledge isn't doing something uh, on the reverse side. That if they're not known that they love God. That they're not known by God. The first knowledge in this verse is uh, optomei. Uh, you can figure out where we get our English word optometrist, optical. It means seeing. The knowledge I have is based on what I've seen. I observe something with my eyes, optimeo, and so I say I know that situation. So I could go to the person and say, do you know this? And they say, yes, I know it, I've seen that. <clears throat> what have you seen it with your eyes? What is the eyes? It's one of the five gates that we receive information of. But, it, but, but what's missing from that? The knowledge of the holy in application to what I've seen. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8, is it? That it says, for now we only know in part. Mm -hmm. We only know in part, but then we shall know face to face. Now I know... Uh, but then I shall be known, uh, then I shall know even as also I am known. Okay? Meaning this, no matter what you know, the score, the all 22, the, the, the watching of the game, uh, no matter what it is, you don't know the whole picture on anything, including yourself. Either I know myself better than anybody. No, you don't. No, I don't. Or a husband might say about his wife, I know her, she's my wife. I know what she likes. I know what she's going to do. I know what's going to happen if this happens. I know what I'm going to say if she says this and she's going to say this if I say that. I know them so well, but you don't know them at all if you're not knowing them after the knowledge of the Holy. After the complete knowledge of God. And the only way we can get that, if you go back to was it last week we talked about the vertical and the horizontal? Yes. Yeah. So knowledge, my basic knowledge, the score, the all 22, whatever it is, is what I know on, on the horizontal about people. I, I know they, they, they like the color blue. I know they like to eat meatballs. I know they don't like onions. I know this, I know that. Uh, but what about what you know about them with God? I can only know that in the vertical. I can only know about the true thing about a person that you will, but if a man loves God, the same is known of him. And that word known there is different than optomei. It's epinosis, 
which is experiential knowledge of a person. God knows those who love him. In fact, the whole basic, basic um, where is it? I want to read this to you. The whole basis of our Christianity is based on God knowing us. If I can find the verse. of the matter. And based on that love, uh, general knowledge goes out the window. So I can't say as a person about anything, if a man think he knows anything through sight, through observation, through witnessing of it even, you, uh, then he knows nothing as he ought to know it. Know it. Experiential knowledge of the thing. So I can't say about anything, I know that. So the know-it-alls go right out the window here. They can't really say that because they don't know. They can't really say, uh, oh, what's the message on today? It's on grace. Oh, I know all about grace. No, you don't. No, I don't. We don't know anything about grace the way we ought to know it. Well, the way we ought to know it. Well, I've heard at least 30 messages on grace, maybe a hundred, maybe 200. I, I don't know anything about grace the way God wants me to know grace today. This is why uh, attention is so important. But so many times we as people, because we think we have this knowledge of things, tune out things. And this is why thinking that you know something becomes so dangerous for you because you can be uh, in a church or talking with somebody and they tell you something or you're hearing a message or you're reading a book and you come across something that you think you know already. You've heard the score. I already know, yeah, I know about that. Yeah, but do you know why? Yeah, I watched it. Okay, but do you know why that, that play didn't work out? Uh, yeah, no, are you a player in that thing? Uh, do you have personal knowledge? of the incident. Who has that knowledge? Who does that? The one that, that whom I love is known, I am known by, God. Only God can reveal what is really going on. Only God knows what is really going on in your heart. And, and, and you can have a, um, uh, a family and a marriage and friendships. You say, I know that person. They are my best friend in the world. I know they don't like this. I know they like this. I know that. But you don't know them the way God knows them. You don't. And I don't. And the only way that I can really know them in their vertical instead of just in their horizontal. I can know everything about a person in their horizontal and it's fine. <laughs> It's, it's what we're, we're allowed to know by that person, by the way. What they want to reveal. And they reveal stuff more to some people than to others. That's life, like we talked about. But in the vertical, there's something else. And there has to be something else. And there should be something else. Because it's God. And it's my relationship with God. And it's, and it's how God views me and how God looks at me. And he looks at my heart and he says, that person loves me. I'm going to reveal myself to them. And you say, well, I love God. <clears throat> a, a person can say a thousand times, I love God. But it doesn't mean much if they don't know it in their heart. This guy yesterday knew every scripture I said. And none of them meant anything to him. 
And no, like we would hear those scriptures and go, whoa, God's never going to leave me and forsake me. I could think about that all day. You know, God loves me forever. I can never lose my salvation. That brings such comfort to my heart. These verses that he heard and learned and he knew in his head had no effect in his life. He could not have them applied to a situation to give him victory over it because it was just a limited knowledge that he was relating to God on the horizontal. And how many times have we done that in our lives? God hasn't done anything for me because my horizontal is not changing. You know? I base my relationship with God if the things in my horizontal are going good or not. And if they're going good, praise the Lord. God is good. Let me wear the t-shirt. God is good. Everything's going good in my life. Will you wear the t-shirt when everything's going bad in your life? Or does it go in the drawer? I'm not wearing that shirt today. I just got fired. My husband's yelling at me. My kids are treating me with disrespect. I don't feel good. Put no shirt on. God is good. Right? Because that's what you know. But it's in the horizontal. No, when, when I got a raise or when somebody brought me a cake or my kids brought me a present, oh, God is good. Praise the Lord. Life is good. God is good. Life is good. Oh, well, let's make a t-shirt out of that. God and life are good. Right? No, God is good all the time. How many people have said that before? Yes, God is good and all the time, Pastor. Yes, all the time. How do I know this? Only in the vertical. Because the horizontal is not going to show me that. It's going to show me a limited knowledge of God. And it's based on situations. And those things change. And those, when those things change, I change God. Because of my knowledge is, we lost. Oh, things aren't going as good. That's a score. Oh, we lost. We stink. No. We haven't lost. I think Pastor Mark said it Wednesday night. It was good. He said, when you have God, you're never the underdog. Right? When you have God, you're never the underdog. You always have an advantage. You always have a favor, no matter what is going on. This knowledge is the knowledge of the holy. This is the complete knowledge that we sometimes lack because we base our knowledge on what we heard the school was or what our eyes have observed, optomei. I see a situation and I say, that doesn't look good. Uh, where is God in that? Where is God in all the suffering of the world? Where is God? God's on the throne. God is where he's always been. <clears throat> God always will be there. No matter what happens in the world, God will be on that. Well, but why is it, like, um, you know, we mentioned it earlier. Uh, why is there more people in Salem today than there are in churches today? And I, I would... I, I don't want to like pat with the like a, I would bet, <laughs> but I would I would almost guarantee that if you added up all the church attendants in the towns around here and compared them to all the people that are flocking to Salem, uh, that would that they would win. And and your your knowledge would say, well, you know, it's a novelty. What is wrong with it, Pastor? What is it, it's a once a year thing. Churches every week. This is a once a year thing. What's the harm in it? You know, it's just a lot of fun. We were just having fun with, with what? What are we having fun with? Oh, there's trinkets there and games and there's some good food and there's, you know, uh, people dressed up in costumes. And what does it all represent? Uh, oh, just a lot of fun. But are there spirits there in Salem? Oh, I would say yes, there are. Do they care that you know what their true identity is? No, they don't. In fact, they like it that you think it's all about pumpkins and goblins and this and that. And, and you're not really seeing the demonic force at play. Not really seeing the true knowledge of what is going on. And, and I'm not coming against it. I will pass out candy on Halloween. Like, it's, a, don't, it's for the children, Pastor. Don't get all bent out of shape. That is not for the children, what's going on over there. There's more adults going there than children. It, it's a spirit. And behind that, behind that, all the trinkets and the fun and the this and the that and, and making wickedness to seem good, 
There is an evil spirit behind it, and the spirit is designed to draw us away from the knowledge of the holy and entertain those things and then say, what's wrong with it? And that's the big phrase and the catchphrase of the day with everything is to do with what is right and what is holy. What's wrong with it? That's what's wrong with it. It takes you away from God. There's more people in Salem today looking at witches and goblins and this and that and entertaining spirits and supporting them. You say, oh, I'm not supporting that. Yes, you are. You can say you're not all day long, but the knowledge of the Holy says, yes, you are. If you're not worshiping God, then you're worshiping the darkness. That's just the way the Bible says it. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. But that's, that's the deep truth and the deep, deep knowledge of what's going on. And again, I'm not trying to be a big potty pooper or anything like that, but it's just a subtle deception by Satan of how to draw people away from God and get them into something else that seems innocent and fun, but it's really not. And it's not just Salem. It's television. It's entertainment. It's anything that's in this world that is against God and the knowledge of God. And there is much, and as the last days approach, as we see the last days approach, that the people will be ever learning these things and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth, the knowledge there is epinosis, the experiential relationship with God, because they'll even be learning about God in the last days. Ever learning about God, ever knowing verses, ever knowing about the things of God. Teach me about, about uh, crystals, teach me about heaven, teach me about the end times, teach me about all these things. And I, I absorb all these things and I can get all these books. I like books, I have a lot of them. But you can take all the books I have and they can't compare to the knowledge that's in the Bible. There are books about teaching you about what the Bible says about things, but they're just the uh, books. They're just books. But some people put the books above the Bible. Oh, the book says this. This book says that. What does the Bible say? If the book isn't supporting the Bible, throw the book away. It's useless. <clears throat> right? Because the Bible has the knowledge of the holy in it. And it's what, what's really happening, what's really going on. It is the truth of it. And so we must be on guard for those things because in the, the, these times that we're living in, this knowledge is ever increasing. We are seeking and we crave it, we want to know, but what is it that we are seeking and craving and want to know? It's not God. It's not God. It's not the relationship between us and God, which is the only thing that matters according to this verse. But if any man love God, the same is known of him by God. And when you look at that breakdown, that word known there, into the epinosis, the personal relationship of, of experiencing God in your life, then all the other knowledge is just secondary. It doesn't mean much. It's just what I see by sight. It's my relationship on the horizontal that I see all these things. I form opinions about them. But without the, the knowledge of God in my vertical, then I can't process even what I'm seeing. I could go by because I can be deceived. My eyes can deceive me. We've heard that phrase, right? Your eyes can deceive you. I see this. This is what must be. I see the score. They must be losers. Oh, no, you didn't know. You didn't know what was going on in the game. You didn't know why they lost the game. You only saw the score and you made an opinion of it. Ever learning about this and that. Think about this how much things you process in one day in your mind. Whether it's on your job, in your family, on the news, what we see, all the information that comes into our brain. So people are disputing this now, but there's a commercial on TV that actually says we have 32,000 thoughts a day. I think that's low. <laughs> uh, 32, oh no, I'm sorry, 32,000 decisions we make every day. That's a lot. Do you make 32,000 decisions a day? They're not big ones, but, you know, little ones. My blue shirt, my red shirt. <laughs> Am I going to sleep 10 more minutes or not? Am I going to say this to them or not? All these decisions we must make in every action of my life. Am I going to drive according to the law or am I going to speed? 
I make I th make these decisions without even thinking, and the, most of the decisions are based on knowledge of the eyes, the ears, the senses. Uh, the big decisions we might wait a little bit before we decide. We call that wisdom, and it is. But when we pray about decisions, when we seek the knowledge of the holy, we seek to know, to find out what. The, the God who knows everything has to say about it, that's true wisdom. Then my perspective uh, can be different than what I'm just seeing on my horizontal. <clears throat> then I am operating in a vertical and I am known because I love God. And that, that God knows it first and foremost, and we said this before, the angels know it also, and the demons know it too. The demons in Salem know that we're worshiping God in Peabody. They don't like it. The devil knows that we have decided <clears throat> in our, our knowledge that, or oh, maybe in your optomai, you were tired today. You know, I think I'm going to sleep in. I'm tired, and I'll justify it because I need my sleep. Fine. Uh, uh, I think I'm not feeling good. I think that it's cold out. I think that it's hot out. I think that uh, it's too far to drive. I think that this, I think that that. And we think all these things and make decisions based on all this outward stimulus and the horizontal, and we never, never go to God and say, do you want me to do this or not? Should I do this or not? Uh, what, when we don't do that, what do we become? Our own God. We become our own God. In a sense, I'll make the decisions in my own life. God gave me a brain. Yes, he did. But guess what? The brain you have is diseased because of sin. God gave us an amazing brain. Uh, but then sin came along and it corrupted us. Our brain, our minds, our hearts, our souls, our flesh everything. So if I continue to make decisions without <coughs> the filter of the Holy Spirit and God, the vertical, then those decisions are all based on a corrupted brain and mind and heart that can be deceived and deceive even me. And so uh, I, if I pray to know the real truth of something, then I won't just say to somebody, oh, I know that. No. You might, I know part of it, I might know part of it. I know a little bit about it. Oh, do you, do you know what happened at the paper? Do you know what happened when Zappy came in? No, I just heard the score. They lost. I don't know. But I, then suddenly I was there. I saw it. Oh, there's more knowledge. I shouldn't say anything if there's more knowledge. Let me hear about it. Oh, but there's even more. I watched the All-22. There's even more. I was in the game. Oh, I want to know who's in the game. That's where I'll get the truest, accurate knowledge from. Who's in the game? God. God knows everything. And if I just simply go to prayer and ask God before I make a judgment, before I speak, before I pass judgment on somebody, I will get insight from the, from the, the, the vertical about everything going on in the horizontal. It might change your viewpoint about things. It might have you see things in a different light. It might have you cause a different opinion in, 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 in the way you look at people or judge people. And, and it's worth doing for us today. Because there are, there, are, there are people, but behind the people there are spirits. And these spirits are coming against us. I don't know uh, how it's been in your life lately, but I know for me personally, there's been a lot of warfare going on, mm -hmm. a lot. And we talk about it a lot, but it, it's, it's ramped up. And it's ramped up for a reason. And, and we, if we're not aware of it, then we won't even pray about it. We're not going to ever be aware of it by observing the horizontal, optomei, seeing things with our own eyes. But we become aware of it when we have the knowledge of the holy in our vertical, when we see things through God's eyes, and we then we can pray, then we can know, then we can understand there's warfare going on here. There's a battle going on here. 
This is what's really going on here. It's not just the score that I'm hearing about. I, I know who somebody's in the game. I know what's really going on. And, I, I, and then now I can make a decision because I have the true knowledge of God and my heart and my mind to apply it to the things in my life. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, uh, we pray that if any are watching, uh, they don't know you as Savior, they would accept you, Lord. Uh, Christ died for our sins on the cross. So I know that. I heard that before. Many people know the story of the crucifixion. You heard it at Easter time. You, heard it, you hear it about his birth at Christmas time. Uh, but do you know that he died for you personally? Do you know that it was your sins that he paid for, as well as the sins of the world? Do you know him in a personal way in your heart? Do you have an epinosis relationship uh, with God, an experiential knowledge of God because he has come into your life and he is real. He's not just something you read about in a book or heard about for your mother or your father or somebody else, but you actually know him personally. If you don't and you would like to, you can just receive him into your heart through prayer, just asking him to come in, dear Lord, I want to know you personally, asking you to come into my heart and uh, be my savior, and he will. And Lord, uh, those of us who do know you, Lord, it's so easy for us to make uh, quick decisions based on uh, partial knowledge or we see things with our eyes or hear things with our ears and we react and we judge and we, we form opinions and we make decisions, Lord, and we don't know if it's from you, the knowledge of the Holy Lord. Let us go to you in prayer and ask and seek wisdom from above before we act on what we've seen and heard, Lord. And we just love you and thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Okay, let's stand.